Welcome to the Yukon North 61. My friend here at the range just left, so I'll be shooting the 30 out 6 Forbes, the 25 out 6 Forbes. Surprise. A 25 out 6 with reloader 22, 115 grain, uh, TSX is shooting well. 3188 feet per second. I'll check the uh, expansion, see if I got a little bit too much pressure with us really smoking down there and it's getting good, uh, good groups. But again, that Forbes goes this way with velocity, so it's shooting a little bit to the left. Uh, surprise of the day is uh, this little rifle here. So far, I'm getting the best average groups out of my Savage 99, <laughs> and it's just load development, luck of the draw. I've shot some loads in the 30 out of 6, it didn't like that much. Get the speeds up with the ball, and the accuracy has gone down. So I might have to stick with H4350 in that rifle, except for my Acubon 180 grain load. And the problem with that load is I can't tell the difference between it and the 150 grain Acubons easily. So want a Grizzly defense load, I might have to just stick with the 150 Acubons at 3050 to 3070. This 308 seems to shoot best when it's about 2750 with 150 grain bullets. The Winchester factory loads are MOA. <laughs> 150 grain power points. So it's shooting everything really well today. So I'll keep shooting. This is a really It's a little tricky because it's got like almost like a two-stage trigger. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way, but that's the way it kind of works out. So it's just a little tricky, but it's shooting really well. So this Savage 99 in 308, I kept this and I traded off my 307 because there are so many really, really good bullets with in the in 308 that you can use because you can use Spitzer bullets in here. You don't have to use the funny flex tips. So you've, you've got just so much choice with bullets. And the 308 is easily 150 feet per second faster. One interesting thing is I think these Savages held the pressure down a little bit by having fairly long throats. So I'm not getting full 308 ballistics. Um, I find this gun shoots best at about 2750 with 150 grain bullets. And unfortunately it doesn't shoot super well with boat tails, but it does shoot really, really well with flat based. So I'm having really, really good luck with 150 grain flat bases. And for example, I've got three, that's a ex expanded view. And I'll show you some more of these. Um, they're averaging right at an inch for three three shot groups uh, with CFE 223 at about 2740. So that's a pretty good load and it's equivalent to the factory loads. I'm also getting one inch groups with Winchester 150 grain power points, believe it or not, uh, at about the same velocity. So here's that rifle with flat nose, 150 grain Hornadies. Uh, there's three three shot groups here and they're averaging right at 1.023 inches. Uh, very good load. It also shoots uh, 180 grain uh, flat nose bullets and 150 grain uh, flat nose bullets from Winchester really, really well. So there's a 1.020 uh, average. These bullets have a ballistic coefficient of about 0.344. So the wind ping-pongs them a little bit, but they shoot so well, I think we're going to standardize with that. Now, one thing I noticed today, I'm trying to make this a 400-yard worthy rifle. And I was shooting quite low at 400 yards, about 10 to 12 inches. And I came home, did some research, and one of the things about this Boone and Crockett, this is a 2.5 to 8 power loophole. It's a great scope. It's got two settings. 
So this setting with the big arrow is set up for fast cartridges at eight power, at its highest power. And then if you go down to the small arrow, see that small little arrow? That's at about 6.7 power. It's now set for slower cartridges. And it is wonderfully, at that 6.7, it is wonderfully set up for a 150 grain bullet with a, a, a decent but not great uh, ballistic coefficient at 2740. Really, really fits well to about 450 yards. Uh, I have shot this rifle at three and 400 yards. I'm not quite keeping MOA out there because it's always a little bit windy and I'm getting a little bit of horizontal drift and I think it's because the ballistic coefficients aren't that great. But on a still day, it'll hold MOA. So this is the rig. I've got left-handed people in my family. So left-eyed people rather. So they can shoot this rifle from the left. I can shoot this rifle from the right. It's not a 500 yard rifle. You also run out of energy. So you only keep 1,200 foot-pounds. I don't know if I wrote that down. Yeah, 1,200 foot-pounds to about 400 yards. So you've got to keep your shots within 400 yards uh, for a variety of reasons. You've also got a fair bit of wind drift. But I'll show you some of these things over here, and we'll talk a little bit more about them. You've got to do a little bit of math to be able to, and a little bit of experimentation to shoot at 400 yards. I might even take this out to a quarter of a mile at 440, but it's definitely a 300 yard rifle for everyone in the family. So I'm very excited about that. The old Savage 99 is a featherweight, six and a half pounds, seven and a half pounds with scope, uh, damn good sheep gun even. So, there you go. The Savage 99 is, uh, this is a keeper. This is one that'll die with me. Thanks for watching. Okay, here's a look at that Boone and Crockett reticle with two, three, four, 450, 500 yard uh, holdovers. Really handy. Um, so why was I a little off at 400 yards today? Well, first of all, I was on the long, wrong arrow. And that gave me 5.2 inches of, of error. So I was shooting, you know, 5.2 inches or so lower than I thought I was. And that's compounded by the fact that it's actually not a 400 yard range. I keep saying 400 yards, but it's actually 385 meters, which is more like about 420 yards. So that gives me another 5.7 inches of error. So I'm now 10.9 inches low at the 400 yard, 400 meter gong, 385 meter gong. And I guess the other piece is I was also sighted in uh, only 1.6 inches high instead of two inches high, which gives me another 2.4 inches of error. So all those errors combined to give me 13 inches of a problem. Hey, first shot. Winchester's, these were shooting just slightly to the left, about two inches high. So I'll try the 300 yard stadium here. So for 300 meters, uh, just shooting just on the upper edge of that uh, was fine. That's about 325 yards or so. And uh, that's only about three inches of error and two inches of error, five inches of error. It's an eight inch plate. So I hit around the middle of it. Okay, let's try 400. I don't know. So at 385 meters or 415, 420 yards, all of these errors combine to put me quite low. So even when I shot at the top of that plate, you can see I'm about 10 inches low because that eight inch 
uh, that eight inch square just doesn't give me enough or eight inch circle doesn't give me enough of a um, error. So I'm shooting way low. So now that I'm gonna use the little arrow, I'll raise my sight up just a little bit. I think I've got the accuracy to hit that eight inch plate every time, unless it's really, really windy. Because of those flat base bullets, this is a 300 yard gun. When it's not windy, when it's perfect conditions, you might be able to stretch it to 400, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not a long range uh, rifle, but it can be uh, better than you'd think because of the accuracy of that rifle. In fact, it shoots just as well as I had a Forbes 20B for a while. This rifle shoots right with it. So it's a really fun having a really lightweight lever gun that uh, is shooting so well. So thanks for watching. This is part one. I'm going to try again when I can hit that four, 385 meter, 415 yard plate three times in a row. Uh, I'll say that I'm done with uh, this testing. So that'll be part two.